So this article, courtesy of the Financial Times, right? I've been thinking about this a lot because I, I stumbled upon another thing, which was, have I got it here? Oh, I don't have it, do I? Annoying. Do I got it? Do I got it? Do I got it? Yeah, I do have it. 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 Yeah, cool. There we go. So I stumbled upon, yeah, this is the one thing I'm talking about. So this is from the Financial Times. Interesting article here. Um, it says here, Taylor Swift battle to shake off the suits, right? Um, campaign to re-record old songs undercut still that acquired US Giants musical hit catalogue. So as you would have known, a few years, was it a few years, a few months ago, news spread that Scooter Braun and some other people he was in business with had bought out the entire Taylor Swift catalogue, um, basically earning her masters, taking away from whatever record label she was in part of, and she kind of, you know, got angry about that because obviously they're taking her art and profiting off of it. And then she got involved in the kind of public feud going back and forth, but essentially the legality of it was watertight. You know, it was up for sale. They had the funds, they bought it, it end the discussion. But in terms of the ethical side of things, if you're an artist and you're putting or you're making music and you're crafting music and then somebody else buys your masters and profits off of it and you hardly get anything because, you know, record deals are known to be bust deals. Is there an option for you to re-record the entire album? Considering how public the news was and space, basically we live in a world where people give a shit about music stuff behind the scenes sort of things i think a few years ago maybe in years gone by this wouldn't necessarily work because i guess public consciousness or their level of give a shit was pretty low but now because you know fans are very much involved in their artist's lives right they follow every facet of their life from them being pregnant to them divorcing hooking up with this person getting dropped i mean they follow the entire journey so it's only natural that those fans would also be willing to listen to and get educated on stuff that concerns the music industry so when taylor swift decides to go on those instagram stories and inform my fans that hey i'm gonna re-record this album that you love please support this one you know what they're gonna do right they're going to support the next one but then if you are the owner of those masters um you're going to be quite pissed off because essentially she's devaluing your product you know by i don't know how many percentage but like by a huge percent right straight away devaluing of course there's still going to be people out there who have no idea she recorded recorded the album and will just listen to whatever comes up first on their music streaming platform service or whatever but the fans fans the ones that actually account for the monies that these record labels kind of profit because they're the ones actually listening to the music you know all year round or you know, until the end of their life basically they're the ones that are going to switch and it throws up an interesting um i won't say moral but it throws an interesting kind of ethical dilemma or like debate right about like who should be able to profit from a record just the artist or everybody that was included in making it that's basically the fact of it so let's quickly read over the article from the ft <clears throat> It says, um, when tussling with his um, record, sorry, when tussling with his record company in the 1990s, Prince famously wrote "slave" on his face and declared and declared that if you don't own your masters, they own you. As he sought to gain control of his work, he threatened to make a new copy of his masters or original song recordings, among other tactics. It took two decades, but eventually Warner Records code ceded control to him. So it took a while. Same thing happened to Kanye when he put out his record contract on of Def Jam on Twitter. I think he mentioned on the Drink Champs that he's out of that deal or something but i don't know if that means he's out of that deal and into another one did they give him back all his masters we don't know they didn't update it because artists do this all the time they'll kick up a fuss about their masters to complain online they all the public laundry out there or their dirty laundry then when they get a deal they don't update their, their fans they don't say anything i'm sure it's to do with ndas but they kind of keep that tight usually it's because it's ndas or mostly in wale in like a wale case they usually sign for they usually complain about one master or oh, complain about one big record company and then just go and sign to another one anyway. Because, you know, I guess the money's just too good to turn down, right? The free money you get, or quote unquote free money. I don't know. But let's continue here. It says Taylor Swift has waged a similar, um, similarly bitter, scorched earth war on a private equity fund that owns her masters. That just sounds gross, isn't it? A private equity fund owns your masters. That sounds similar to like this new. This is not like a new, but there's a conspiracy theory out there that all these conglomerates of you know privately owned companies or equity funds whatever they may be will get to a point where they're going to start charging people for water and shit right like you know it's the charge people to for air the air you breathe so like i guess the water thing will be similar to like a dune thing but imagine you get charged for air you breathe the spaces you occupy as in like standing loads of crazy shit like that and this is where it comes from basically you own nothing you just basically a vessel you come and go 
It, con it continues here, said it looks like again in this instance, a pop star will emerge victorious in a battle of the suits. Shamrock, a Los Angeles investment fund founded by the Disney family in 1978, is essentially shrewd and is usually shrewd and meticulous, according to people who have worked with them. But Shamrock made one major miscalculation when agreeing to buy Swiss Masters for 300 million, her commitment for revenge. To recap, Swift had a falling out with Scooter Borchetta, the executive known as Scooter Braun, who discovered her in a Nashville bar. Borchetta sold his company, Big Machine, which owned her master, to Scooter Braun. Oh, it's another one. Okay, Scott Borchetta is Scooter Braun. Okay, it's not Scooter Braun, it's another guy. So to recap, Scooter Borchetta sold his master to Big Machine, which owned her masters, to Scooter Braun, the former manager of Kanye West and obviously Justin Bieber. Swift um, erupted on the news of the sale, claiming it was stripping her of her life's work. She announced plans to re record all albums they had bought. Is something I'm very excited about. The singer smiling widely in the signature femme fatale red lipstick told ABC Morning News as fans shrieked at the background. Surprisingly, Braun and private equity backers that included Carney soon wanted out of the investment, of course, because it was completely worthless. The moment she declared she was going to re record the bits, the album, the, all the albums, they entirely made the albums worthless because I'm sure within those little Taylor Swift hives or what they call they called Swifties, whatever they called, right? They probably got a rule there where you're meant to not listen to this album, listen to that one, delete this they've got these little tactics they do in terms of making sure that their favorite artists are in good when it comes to the streaming platform so yeah that investment's completely null and void it continues they said while shopping the masters around they told potential acquirers that swift might not actually follow through with her threats and publicity generated by her ire only boosted listening of the old catalog according to three people approached uh, to buy the asset what damn these are uh, these guys man um the message was imagine all these meetings are probably taking place in the ace hotel they're over there just kind of talking about her masters like she's a slave fucked up in it um the music the message was the controversy has been great for us every time she lights up us lights us up online people go listen to those songs said one of those people that pitch sounded reasonable enough after all that's currently um what currently is charting pop star would rather bother spending years of her life recreating decades old work so that's what i was thinking too because taylor swift has released a lot of albums over the years i haven't listened to any of them because you know the music is boring but she's put out a lot of work so to go back and re-record all those albums is is something as it turns out, Swift's above average level of determination has kicked off one of the most interesting experiments in modern music history. One of the most commercially successful artists of the past decade is painstakingly creating a copy of her first six albums. Do you know how much work that goes into that? Because I'd imagine a lot of those stuff, I imagine especially earlier on, early on, sorry, you probably don't have the stems for the stuff, right? You're probably re recording it off ear. Maybe the people that you worked with previously are no longer here with us. Like, oof. There have been examples of famous artists re-recording copies of their music, such as Frank Sinatra and Def Leppard, but these cases um, were before the streaming era. Swift's new version now sits alongside the private equity owned tracks on people's phones. This Swift will, um, this week Swift will release her second re-recorded album, a copy of 2020 Breakup Anthem Red. It's still unclear how much the re-recording of the albums like this will affect the Shamrock 300 investment. The price is included in earning payable to Braun and Carla. The assets hits a certain target. A to familiar people in a deal it's good in the the, the earn out the price is close to 250 so they really lost 350 million on it that's ouch the swift catalog earns about 50 million a year yo man god damn um according to people who have seen the financials so shamrock's price at 250 works out to about a multiple around 16 times of historic income it's a longer term value is being undercut by not only swift but by her for a powerful record label um universal the campaign for red taylor's version spans a merchandise line in our autumn an autumnal tiktok filter talk show appearances and starbucks promotion latte sold in stores from seoul to mexico city so they backed out the brink truck of course because they want a bit of that money too they don't want all the streaming rights to be going to the one that the big machine owns so universal are doing all of that mate Do you know what i mean merchandise they even called it red taylor's edition taylor's version sorry fucking wild which again brings me on to the last point on this topic which is this uh interesting little tidbit courtesy of um and you, oh, i don't have it here let me just look i've got to load it up first 
annoying. I had it available before, but basically it was Ashanti talking to Angie Martinez about the struggle that she's having at the moment, um, trying to recreate one of her albums and basically going back and forth with Irv Gotti about the whole thing. I won't, I won't get up there. It's quite long to get it, but regardless, um, interesting to see this happening. Regardless, I want to see if more artists do this. I think, again, the, Ash the Ashanti one's a good one. Um, and it, the Ashanti one's an interesting one, actually, maybe more so than the Taylor Swift one, because if I'm not mistaken, Irv worked as a producer on a lot of her early albums they had a very kind of close relationship as in they were dating throughout i think a large period of her kind of career coming up so it's a lot more messy i guess than the whole scooter braun scott bochetta sort of big machine sort of stuff right that's just like her being pissed off that somebody else owns her music and owns her rights to her work and she can't really profit off of them the way that she could if she actually owned most of the rights so i get that but in the, with the Ashanti and the flipping Murder Inc. and the Irv Gotti stuff. That's really interesting because I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was really annoyed because he was essentially saying that I worked on those albums too or those singles, right? They're just as much as they're your work, they're also mine. But then I would say the issue you have with that is that when it comes to music, the people presenting it, the ones that are on the tracks, the ones that are recorded, whether it's instrumentalist or the person that's a vocalist, right? They're the ones that act. They're the ones that are basically sprinkling the magic dust on it, the magic stardust. We already see what happened with Quinton Miller, right? We all heard the reference tracks when they dropped. He's obviously a genius writer. He's obviously really good at what he does. But there's no denying that without Drake saying those words the way he does and putting the extra bit of sparkle on them, those songs don't bang as well for Quinton Miller as they would have done, as they obviously did do for Drake. And that's the obvious fact of it. So when Irv Gotti speaks about you know he feels robbed and those songs are just as much as just those songs are his just as much as they're hers it's like yeah but no do you know what i mean because they're you know we know them for her being her songs they're kind of you know they hold a special place in a lot of people's hearts in terms of growing up and first watching music videos and all this sort of stuff and i'd imagine again for a legacy artist like an ashanti she's gonna profit or she's going to spend a lot of her career basically revisiting those old hits in terms of her performances and stuff right she doesn't really strike me as somebody that wants to go out there and compete with all the young guns every single year and put out music and try and beat fucking um you know summer walker and stuff in terms of records and all that sort she doesn't want to do that right she doesn't want to enter the game and start battling with dua lipa that doesn't make any sense so she wants to keep performing and you're obviously going to be performing a lot of those odd records so it's probably not a good use of your time and probably does feel like a bit of a blow to the face when you go and perform somewhere and you're not really getting any residual income from that song that you put so much blood sweat and tears in but then again from the i've got his side of him being a producer i also understand it because he played an instrumental part in making those records so it's a hard one to judge and a hard one to say but interesting to watch this from afar to see how what these artists do in terms of re-recording albums or whether the record industry too will do what they usually do as well and just kind of figure out a way of kind of rejigging the deals and making it so that these artists can't re-record albums. I could easily see that happening too because there's one thing we know about record labels, they don't like to lose money. They're not in the business of losing money at all. So if they can rejig it and make it work for themselves, they'll do it. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens.